What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV with the latest addition to the Flashpoint lineup, the Explorer 100. So aside from being 100 watt seconds, a small form factor, it's in the family with the Evolve 200, the Explorer 400, the 600, and even the V1. In fact, in my opinion, it's kind of like a different form factor, a little bit more powerful version of the V1. In fact, it takes the same battery. So if you already got a few of these or you're in this system as it is, you kind of have like a little ecosystem going on here, which is pretty cool. It's roughly like having a, a lens in your bag. It's that kind of size. Give you a little bit of reference here, a can of soda, you know. Uh, but it is 100 watt seconds opposed to about 75 watt seconds ish on this. It's a different form factor. It's a little more power, which means with more power comes more responsibility of creating a cooling system. So it does have a fan on it to kind of keep the uh, the light from overheating, which is something that speed lights are kind of prone to. So what is this actually giving me? Well, it's a flat front facing round head, which is a little bit more efficient than something like a bare bulb. While this is great for fulfilling large modifiers, five foot octaves or something like that, something that's large with a 360 degree expulsion, the forward facing lens type heads are actually a little bit more efficient. So while they're different watt seconds, which is not a measurement of power, uh, I, I feel like that's a crazy misconception. I have a video on my own channel about that if you wanna check that out. But it's more about what you're getting as efficiency once the light leaves the head. That's really where your power is. So why don't we just get a model in here? I got Justin in here today. Let's start shooting right here. We'll keep it simple, single light, some fill light. I could introduce more lights, but we're just trying it out today. So let's just see where this goes. All right, so let's get Justin in here, Justin. All right, come on. I got your mark right over there. We're gonna shoot right against the gray wall and we're just gonna keep this simple, remember? Um, let me just start by saying, I would just put this on a travel stand. I know this is kind of overkill. I'm in a studio, I'm gonna use a C stand, but you can see how small this thing is. You can get away with a really lightweight stand like uh, the Manfrotto Nanopole reverse stand. It's really good for stuff like this. Uh, now, there's no mount on this thing. There's no like Bowens mount. There are adapters, we'll try those out a little later. But right off the bat, instead of just going right into raw light on Justin, which I'm sure you can handle him. You're a tough guy, I know. But we're gonna go and throw an umbrella on this thing. And one of the cool things about making a small light that has a little bit more power is you can make it feel like a bigger light. So we are going to use this 41er-ish sort of white umbrella from Glow. I'm just gonna feed this right into the socket, because it does have a 5 8 pivot that is quarter 20 mounted. So you can take it off of this, put it on a tripod or put it on any sort of thread that you want, or you can put it right onto this, which has a 5 8 socket onto a pin, onto a stand, and you're good to go. I'm gonna put on the modeling light, and what that's gonna do is let me see exactly where my spread is. So this is gonna give me a relatively large swash of light, which means it's gonna go pretty much everywhere, I, which, you know, I think people talk about umbrellas not having control, but I'm gonna show you right after this shot how to get some control. So, uh, how you doing here, right? I'm good. Yeah? yeah? We'll do like a classic 45. I'm just gonna give this umbrella as much of a fill as I can do it. Ooh, you're all smiley today. What's going on? Oh, man. Look it's, at you. <laughs> it's good to be out of the house. I, I bet, I bet. <laughs> so I'm gonna tether in using a Nikon Z62 and the R2 trigger, which is the Flashpoint trigger. Boom, right there, got an exposure, pretty nice. And if I wanted to, I could use this super expensive reflector. You guys all know what this is. Nice piece of foam core, or as we call it, the Brooklyn reflector. Bring it in right there on the left side and ba boom. And we'll fill in a little bit of the shadows and just open up that jawline a little bit if we wanted to. Now this is throwing light everywhere. What if I wanted to do some more drama? Because I think the last thing we ever did was like this crazy character yeah, demo. Yeah, I remember that which is available on Adorama's Facebook. If you go on their uh, video library on Adorama's Facebook, there's a ton of live demos and me and Justin did a really good character demo, I think, with making some like rainy light, all sorts of stuff. So what's happening here? The light's spilling everywhere because I'm hitting a 40-inch umbrella and spilling everywhere. It's not like flagged or having some place to, to grid it down or stop the spread of light. So I'm gonna turn on the uh, model light just so I can see what I'm doing. 28, 35, 50, 70, and 85 millimeter, which is as zoomed in as this head can get, which is great. So that's usually something you only see on speed lights, not really ever on a studio or mono lights or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're calling this a mini mono light. So it's kind of a little extra you get out of it. And that's going to actually keep my light more focused, gets uh, the spread down. So that's not enough to limit the spread coming out of the umbrella. So here's my little cheat code. Oh, but I like to just put a clamp in there so that when we 
close it down, it doesn't go all the way. So now I have a smaller umbrella, right? With the same umbrella. All I did was close it down. I am going to lift it up a little bit and I'm gonna scooch it towards Justin. So what do I have now? I have a tighter light that's not gonna hit the background so much. It becomes more zoned right to Justin being my only uh, subject that I'm getting exposure for. We should see a way darker background, more shadowy and chiselly look. You know what I'm going for, right? Mm -hmm. I can even adjust this a little bit more, make it a little tighter. And there we go. I wish someone made an umbrella with steps in it. So if someone does that, uh, you owe me royalties, but it's a good idea, right? Okay, so, <laughs> so let's do this. Okay, so we're gonna play towards this light. Cause the light's so narrow, Justin can't go just everywhere, but that's kind of the trade-off. More drama means more shadows. So we're gonna get more of a darker look on Justin overall, but we really shape out those features and it works really well. I mean, Justin has that chiseled jaw type face, very dimensional square type stuff. We always make you look like some kind of like cop. Yeah. It's always like, that's the backstory. You make me look really cool, much but, cooler than I really <laughs> but with the background going darker, it's less a part of the frame. It's, it's a little more focused on uh, adjustable. If I wanted to just break the shadows open on Justin, not make, keep them super dense, it's a matter of how close I put the bounce. And remember, we're on a tight light. So doing this isn't gonna do much, but keeping it within the beam, we should see a little bit more of a reflector take place and open up that jawline that you see right there. Now, this has to do with beam angle, which is a lot of uh, discussion when it comes to efficiency of light. That's kind of what you deal with when it comes to a zoomed head is how much of a beam angle and how much more you get out of that light exposure wise when it's a tighter beam. And again, because I'm zoomed, it's not hitting the edge of this umbrella, which means not spilling everywhere. It gives me a little bit more of an edge if I want to control what's going on with this umbrella. Just a quick little thing to show you some more control with an umbrella. I feel like I said the word umbrella 800 <laughs> times, but is what it is. Uh, but what if we want to do like a really open light? If we want to have like a really soft, just blown around light. Let's go into a setup that'll do that. Okay, so from going super dramatic on just and getting those shadows to opening up the entire space, we are running this into the ceiling as a bounce, but before it even comes back, we're throwing a, it's about a stop and a half diffuser. It's a glow uh, 5-1 reflector that I took the skins off of. So it's super cost effective. Uh, I know the, the C-stand's a bit much, but shooting by yourself, it's, it, this is what's so great about having a C-stand. So we had a big light, nice diffusion. The bigger the light is in relation to my subject, the softer the light. So we got, all the shadows gone, and I throw in a real nice expensive reflector underneath it, Justin. Keep it a little bit tight, and boom, I have a nice soft light. So this is how much versatility you get just from easy modifiers, low cost modifiers, and just this single little light with 100 watt seconds. Not bad. Okay, so we went right into a 25 inch white lined beauty dish with a diffuser on it and a grid. So what's different about this and the umbrella one when we close the umbrella? Well, the umbrella, while it's closed down and limits the spread, it's not diffused. There's a difference between diffused and soft. The diffusion here actually plays games with the shine that's on his uh, skin, his skin tone, things like that. And you can actually see the difference if you look at it. Uh, subtleties are a big thing in lighting. Uh, it takes a while to kind of like get a uh, feel for that. But in this, we got the nice, uh, tight light, but we also got it nice and even and clean, which is something you might not get with a, an erratic closed down sort of umbrella. So the background has like its own consistent element. He has his own consistent light. And then we even threw in a silver reflector, just to give you that like glinty, silvery, slippery type light. I don't know how to ever explain it, but uh, yeah. So we gave you the drama, then we cleaned up the drama. So you have both options. So you are free to go, my friend. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So nice little nifty little light. Again, it feels almost like another lens in your bag. So I guess that's kind of cool if you're someone on the go, photojournalists that need a little bit more power, but also want to have the ability to do kind of like on location studio type stuff. You have it right here. And again, you get this weird mix of speed light features like zoom, uh, the zoom head and the same battery as the V1. And it's the kind of the form factor of being small, but you also get that ability to kind of extend it a little bit more as a studio strobe as well. So we're kind of blurring more of those lines as we get more and more versatile with gear and we're seeing more and more options. This is just another option in the line of flashpoint gear. So you might be in that system and you might be the one for this light, may not be for you. That's your choice. Uh, all right, but if you guys have any questions for me about my use with the Explorer 100, hit me with a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer it. Don't forget to like, share this video around, hit subscribe and the bell for more videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Thank you. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> yeah, man. Be good. Take care. Take care. Take care, I said.
I said, take care.